Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello, hello, hello. Sam Healy. What's up, folks? I feel Welcome like this back. guy is getting me. Huh? Yeah. Like me. He might be. So we're remaking Maybe. yet another... It's obscure, so you don't know. <laughs> We're remaking yet another top 10 list um, from four years ago, and this is top 10 obscure games. Mm, creepy themes, basically, right? Like mm. sort of obscure, you know, otherworldly type of stuff. No. Uh, that's not what the list is supposed to be? Nope. So, this is kind of a... Do we need to pause the video? So ambiguous. You know, redo your list. <laughs> yeah, I'll right. just make it up as I go. <laughs> okay. Good. This All is right. kind of an ambiguous thing because what's obscure to us so I tried to pick games for my list that I figured most people would not have heard or played of, but that I really like. Yeah. Again, that's that's a completely arbitrary. Yes. Yeah. However, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess for at least that almost all mine, maybe my top two, but the top two I only would say are not obscure for maybe Dice Tower fans because I talk about them a decent amount. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, and that, again, that's that's another place that we run into, another, another hitch that we run into because some of these games I've talked about a lot. And so maybe to our audience, they aren't going to be as obscure. Well, we'll judge if it's obscure or not. We're going to help you. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll be like... I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, that's a good point, Steph. Definitely, to, if, we, if these are games that are obscure to most people, but we talk about them a lot... And you've seen us talk about it, then yes, this won't be like, what's he talking about? You might have heard us mention it. Right. That's fine. But I didn't, like, I don't have any games from Fantasy Flight on my list. You know. Get out of here, Fantasy I have, Flight. I have one. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe it's, it's not their scary. regular fare, though, so. Like Quicksand Fair, you know, that, that, that. Everybody's played line. that stupid dice game already, Sam. Everybody knows it. What okay. Dice game? <laughs> Let's get started. One. Let's get started. Here we go. Number 10. All right, so my number 10 is not a Fantasy Flight game. Okay. I, I I'm guess, never waiting for that one. I guess that is now the the moniker. If it's it a is, CMON game. If it is made by Fantasy Flight, it is not obscure. It's Hasbro. Uh, no, it's not. It's not either, either of those. I, I don't even remember the name of the... Um, anyway, this, this game is actually even based on an older popular game that has even now some level of obscurity to the general masses. Ogre. Okay. Now, Ogre is Ogre. a huge game, and, and if you have your finger on the pulse at all, really, you probably know what Ogre is, but it's an old game out of nowhere. Objective 218, I think, is even more obscure than that. Mm -hmm. And this is... Wait, a, is that your number 10? Yeah, that's my number 10. Oh, I was getting ready to fight over Ogre. No, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. Oh, no. I mean, you know of Ogre. Okay. You know of Ogre. But they took that universe, and then they took a game that was called Battle for Two Eight, Battle for Hill Two Eighteen, which is yeah. a World War Two theme, yeah. and they applied the Ogre universe to Battle for Hill Two Eighteen, right. and they called it Ogre Objective Two Eighteen. All right, I, and, I, I, I approve of this choice. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. It's it's not obscure because that seems I, obscure. I, 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 I mean, forgot about it until you mentioned it. I guess, yeah. And, and I guess that's kind of the, the vibe that most of these games, are, on my list at least, are going to rest. They're going to be about games that are now obscure. Or at least they're currently obscure. You don't know about it. Maybe because it's too old or whatever. But anyway, this is a, this is a great game. I, I, I wasn't actually too thrilled about Battle for Two Hill. Bleh. Battle for Hill 218. Mainly because I didn't like the title. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I actually liked the theme. I liked the idea of you have two sides that are fighting for the same objective. Right. But it just didn't seem to work with that World War II theme on it, which was strange for me because I usually like World War II themed games. But this one is what actually pulled it together. I liked... Um, the every, tanks and stuff do it yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Tanks and stuff fighting. But you also have troops that are that are moving and trying to fight for the objective as well. I don't know. It just seemed a better fit for the game. And most people, as far as I know, have kind of overlooked this game. Yeah. So that's why I put it on my list. Number 10, Obscure Games, Ogre, Objective 218. My number 10 is from a very well-known designer these days, but it was his first game, uh, and I don't think he self-published it, and that's Tricks and Treats by Emerson Matsuuchi. Okay. Um, 
This is a Halloween little Halloween theme, theme yeah. game where you're playing cards into pumpkin, I mean, into your little pumpkin that you carry around with a handle. But mm -hmm. no one knows who how owns what thing. Trick or treat basket. Each person has one, but you can call someone. Yeah. I'll be like, Sam, that's definitely yours. But then I'm wrong. I'm out of the game. It's a really short game. I really liked it. Yeah, this is a cute little game. This was the game that I was like, oh, this guy made a fun little game when he sent me the next one, Volt. But then I was like, oh, this is he makes some pretty good stuff. Then after that, his rising star, very much so. But I like it. Tricks and treats, my number ten. Cool. Well, speaking of. Uh uh, treaks, uh, tree, treaks, 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 and tricks. Treaks and tricks. Hmm. It's half them. Speaking of tricks, this is a trick-taking game. What? This is, will be the first Shocking. of four trick-taking games on this I switch. don't believe <laughs> it. Also, two F of G games. No. Okay, this is called Eternity, and this is a, uh, like I said, a trick-taking game in which you are not just, you are both, uh, Grabbing cards, but you also need to some every now and then you need to throw basically a card away to get a token instead And you score the combination of cards and tokens It's also one of those games that the suit the trump suit will change throughout a single hand and this game handles that very very well I like the way it does it. It doesn't it's not so volatile that it's pointless You know that it just changes every hand, but uh, the players of the table can very much affect what's going on and what happens and balancing the, it's kind of like, you know, it has a tree growing kind of theme. You have to balance basically the plots of land with the trees, and you don't want to have more of one kind than the other, you know. It's cool. It's well done. You've played this with me, I think. Uh, this came out of Essen a couple of years ago. Yeah, I remember playing it. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really... Stop, I remember it. Sam. <laughs> I remember so it much. fondly. I like it a lot. It's one of my favorite trick-taking games. It works really well. So that's Eternity, my number 10. I just realized... This is like Z's bread and butter. Yeah, I know. This is like a regular top ten for him. Hey, man. Yeah. Ah, I guess. A lot of these know. games are new-ish. That might be why they're still kind of like unknown also. Mm -hmm. ah. I figured I would just highlight some newer stuff, though. I tried not to do that. My stuff's all old. It's too new? Yeah, it's too new. So, of course, nobody knows about it because nobody knows about it yet. Yeah. I have one yeah. new-ish game. We'll get to it. Number nine. I could have picked any game from... Oh, before we do this, I should mention... Oh, he just thought of a caveat. That all the games on this list that we are doing are real, legitimate games. <laughs> this is true, yes. That, Why would you need to clarify <laughs> that? Four years ago, uh -huh. this list was released on April the 1st. And it is the list that we did, Life Shower, Go! And I don't know. Assault on Ganymede. Assault on Ganymede, yeah. <laughs> they so were, those are all real games. Yeah. No, they're not real So we made games. it fake games and stuff, in which almost no one even noticed. So we felt bad about that. So we're not pulling the wool over your eyes again. These are yeah, all real. I mean, this is, I mean, it's not even April or anything like that. So. <laughs> I love how you felt the need to I know, clarify. You, you By the to, way, yes. these are all actual real yeah, games. Yeah. I'm going to do that now from, on every top ten from now on. These are all real games. Folks. No, I'm just saying. So people aren't looking for it. Okay, anyway. So for my number nine, I could have picked almost any game from Eight Foot Llama. They made these small little games back in the days. Oh gosh, I forget what they were all called. I mean, one was about penguins, one was about Mexican smuggling Mexican food to Canada. Yes. But the one I'm picking is Monkeys on the Moon. Yes, yes, right. yes. Monkeys on the Moon. It's the these, best one. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's the components weren't great. They were okay. The, the artwork, but essentially, you were some monkeys. Trying to build a rocket ship. On the moon. Yes, on the moon to, bl to blast off your rocket ship. And you were bidding and getting the equipment you need, and you had monkeys, and they were doing monkey shenanigans. It was like a little bit of auctioning and stuff. and they, But it just it came together in a pretty decent way with a really silly theme. He was all about silly themes when he made the games for 8-Foot Llama, which was you know the name of the company. You know, he would think, what's a really weird theme? Smuggling Mexican food into Canada. That's a funny theme, right? Well, this one was Monkeys on the Moon. But it actually worked pretty well. I don't know if this game's easy to find. It probably isn't at all. But I enjoyed it. Monkeys on the Moon. I remember playing this game in Korea. At Bob's house. No, not at Bob's house. I, I thought it was at, we had a... At the zoo. We took our kids to a indoor gym. This was a card game, right? Yeah, with a little few cubes yeah, and stuff. Yeah, we played this when our kids were at like an indoor playground type place in Korea. We were sitting off on the uh, snack area playing this on the table while our kids played. 
Cool. That's exactly Even I remember that. Yeah, well. Exhilarating. I remember the circumstance. I do not no, remember sometimes the that, game. That happens to me sometimes. Like, I, I, some games I, I know what song I heard when I played that mm. game. Or there was some event that happened that you remember. My number nine. Oh, I'm so worried that we're getting two. I know. Was not, I don't actually remember the game that well, but I remember that day I had a burger. And it was oh my goodness. easily the best burger I've ever had. Allow me to describe it to you. It was a patty made from elk meat. <laughs> Some of the finest cuts of elk. Is your jerk mode off yet? Not quite. Mm. One more, one more. Uh, it had some... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, my number nine is a game called Animalia. And this is from the same um, team, basically, that put out Jamaica originally. This came out before Jamaica, but it has the same artwork. Uh, and, and by that I mean As the same pirates. artist. Same artist, yeah. When I said artwork, I'm like, hold on. Same artist, and it's um, from some of the same designers that did Jamaica. And in it you are, it's a very simple card collection kind of game in which you flip over a card and everybody has a shot to take it. No one takes it, and you flip over another card and kind of make the lot bigger. And then everybody has a chance to take it. And so you're just collecting sets. And there's illustrations of different animals that are adorable. It's, the artwork is fantastic. If I'm not mistaken, this is the one that was made for a pet insurance company in Norway or something. I forget where I am. I apologize. Right, they, made, they made the copies of the game as gifts for all the employees, yeah. and that was it. They didn't make it anymore. Then their second game was Jamaica, and, and we played Jamaica, and we're like, we want that first game. Yeah, this game was fun it, it was released. I mean, they, they, you could buy it and sell it eventually, but originally that was the intent. Yeah. Right. Anyway, it's a, it's a really neat card game. Super hard to find. Probably the hardest game to find on this whole list. And so that's my Oh, well, mine was only sold three copies no, this, to monks this, and different this monasteries. Tough. This was and, tough to get. Okay. All the other ones, they're either newer or you can get them. But, um, yeah, that's my number nine, Animalia. All right, my number nine it. is a uh, sports simulation game. FFG? Go! <laughs> it is, is it a not. real game? It is a real game, yes. And uh, sports simulation sports simulation games are really hard to get it right, I guess yeah. you could say. I mean, they have there's a lot of games that have been out there that kind of, you know, sometimes they just for me at least they they draft too much toward um, just being a little bit too like fiddly and too stat driven. Yeah. Uh, and they kind of miss the 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 crux of the actual sport that it's supposed to be simulating. Yeah. This one, though, kind of falls more heavily on the the side of simulating the sport that it's supposed to be, and that is a game called Super Eleven. Uh, it's a soccer game that came out a couple years ago, but Super it has largely 11. been overlooked. It's a terrible name. But it is a... No, it's actually not, because there's 11 people on the field in the game of soccer on your team. Are they superheroes? Sure. In their own right. You seen a soccer game? Those guys are basically superheroes. I'm sitting there eating pizza while they're doing this. <laughs> okay, this that, is true. That, that, that's true. This that's is true. true. So anyway, Super Eleven is is does probably one of the better. I'm not going to say the best because I I haven't played every soccer game that's out there. But this is one of the better ones, and it's very simple. My seven year old can play it. Uh, it's not difficult at all. Uh, this is also one of the soccer games that I have that uh, my older kids also enjoy playing. And they enjoy playing it with my younger kid. They, we enjoy playing it together as well. Um, so it, it's, it's a great game. It's largely gone overlooked. It has pretty cool components as well. Little uh, soccer jersey busts instead of just tiles or something like that. Oh. It's, it's interesting. It's really neat. Uh, so that's my number nine, Super Eleven. Cool. Just don't like that name. That's okay. You don't have to. Number eight. My number eight is a card game I reviewed not too long ago. And again, this is fairly new, so that might be why it's not very well known. But this is a card game called Harvest Island. Got to play with your daughter, actually, the first time. The oldest one. And this is, uh, in it you are planting... No name. The oldest one. <laughs> well, Melody is the oldest one, you know? I figured if I said the oldest one, you knew which one. Anyway, I was having that burger that day, and it was incredible. It's, it's an amazing it burger. Again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on. So in it, you are planting. Ding, 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 ding. You're uh, planting and harvesting, obviously. 
The game is, I believe it's Korean, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. It's got gorgeous artwork all over the place, and it's got a really nice, um, tricky kind of mechanisms, but a really nice cadence of you planting and then knowing when to sell it all off before the weather takes a turn. Sometimes as you are pulling cards, you pull a, uh, it's too cold, the weather's too cold or too hot. And if you ever have too many of one kind, they cancel out. Like if there's a hot, a hot card and you pull a cold, those two cancel. But if you ever get like two or something more in one of them, your stuff will spoil. And you gotta know how long you push your luck until you sell it all off and you go through a few different seasons. It's a really nice set collection game with a cool theme, great artwork, and it just works very well. Like I said, I did a review. If you want to know more, just check out the Harvest Island review. But that's it. Really enjoy it, and uh, this is the kind of game I could see being picked up by someone else with a wider distribution and, and getting some good, you know, some good buzz. So that's my number eight. My number eight is a game by Backspindle Games. It's an uh, Irish-based company. And uh, this is based on, I believe, a mail system that is in one of Terry Pratchett's novels. That's the basis of the theme for this game. It's called Clax. And Clax is an interesting little thing where you have this mail system where you can send it by mail. One faction, I guess you could call it, in the book, and I haven't read the book, so forgive me, uh, sends mail by ground. Okay. And uh, the other faction has this tower system that's set up on this island that has different kinds of, it's almost like a, not Morse code, but it's a light system, lighthouses, where you can... Light the beacons! Yeah, well, that's kind of the vibe that it gives me, because you can send these messages um, by these beacons, by these towers. or and, and the whole thing of the game is that you're trying to be the first person to get your message to uh, where it's supposed to go on the other side of the board. Okay. But you have all of these little tiles on the board this that... This is an abstract strategy game. No, it, it's oh, man, it's very thematic. It's uh, well, according to the according to the book, it is actually. But they have these little tiles that have on on one side it's a light, and on the other side it's it's a dimmed light. So you have these cards in your in your front that stand for different letters and different words, and you have to get the towers to flipped in the right configuration to send the message oh, wow. the quickest. Okay. And it's, it it doesn't sounds, sound like your type of game. It's it's actually pretty cool. It can be played cooperatively or competitively. They have two different modes in it. Okay. I've, I've, I have I've tend to like the compo uh, cooperative mode a lot better because you can be really mean in the competitive mode mm -hmm. and switch other people and just mess around that with their configurations. Like kind of game, so. so I really enjoyed it though, but it has just really flown underneath the radar. But that's Clax from Backspindle Games. My number eight is the newest game on my list. It came out in Essen 2016, maybe? And that is Habitats. Um, the game's from uh, Quali Don't amazing. Get. No, you played it. We were at a burger. <laughs> we were at a burger. <laughs> Don't steal my bed. I, you can do anything else. Tacos, whatever. Burger's mine. Okay, oh. no, but we you did, you did play this one. Habitat is a um, Quali game, and Quali games... A lot of them could fit on this list because very few. I mean, I could probably put Basket Boss. That's even more of an obscure one I like a lot. But that's a good one. Uh, in this game, you have these different safari tiles, and you have these little animals that you're moving, and, and you're turning them and moving and taking the tiles and putting them in front of you and getting points based on this habitat that you're building. Uh -huh. mm. You definitely played it. They came with the little glass figurine lions and mm. seals. Yes. The glass. Bits well, the, in there? They aren't in the newer version, I believe. They were in the original one. Really? They were, like, they were little, like little rubber animals. Oh, no, no. They were like little porcelain glass type things. Uh, okay. Do we oh, play status? Oh, I think we played at BGG. Yep. That's what it was. But I played it several times. I really I really enjoy this game. It, I think it scales pretty well. You are you get to move around. So there's a little bit of movement, but it's basically taking this tile. Then how are you going to put these tiles Tiles are going to score based on what's next to them, and right. different tiles score different ways. It's a pretty solid game, but Quali just doesn't ever really get their games. Occasionally, a Quali game will break the mold, and a lot of people will hear of it. Yeah, their, their soccer game did really well, and probably the the, the racing Power game, boats, Power Boats. It, yeah. 
But for the most part, their games, they put it out, a few people play it, then it's gone. They're so. good games, too. He's a very good designer. Yeah, so I like this one a lot. That is Habitat. Number seven. My number seven is a very new game as well. So again, if uh, this is weird for him to be pulling new stuff out. Well, I, I know on an obscure list, which is like I didn't want to. I, I have no repeats with the old list. His entire part, room part room was kind of yeah. switched over. Anyway, this is called Rescue Polar Bears, which just came out. That's super new. Here, yeah. Well, whatever. It's obscure. Okay, um, it's not. You have the good list this time. <laughs> and it <laughs> is. It's a co-op game in which you are rescuing polar bears. It's got kind of a weird title, Rescue Polar Bears. I guess it's like, go go and get it done, you know? Well, it's know. like a command. Uh, rescue Polar Bears. <laughs> I guess so. Or they could have been Rescue Polar Bears, which right. means the polar bears are the rescuers. Or it could be you're saying Rescue Polar Bears. Yes. Depends where the comma is. There is no comma exactly. or colon. If it was Rescue Colon. Polar bears. I'd be like, okay, there's the beginning of a series. <laughs> It'll be like rescue donkeys. <laughs> that one doesn't sell as well. Humpbacks. <laughs> yes. But um, the game is the one thing that'll stand out immediately if you see this game is the little polar bear figurines, right? There's little porcelain. Uh, well, they're not porcelain. They, I don't know what they are, but they're ceramic. Little polar bear figures, and they got the pop up polar bears, the mamas, and the little babies. The little baby's like a dot. It's like a little boop, little dome with eyes, you know. And you put them all over the board, and then you're moving your ships, loading them onto your ship, delivering them off the board because the ice is melting. And if they fall into the water, if they don't have a space to go to right next to where they fell in, you have to get a rescue helicopter in there and rescue them. You can only do that a few times in the game, and then if it happens again, you've lost. And it's a very tactical, interesting co-op game. That like the polar bears can die in this game? They can, no. I think well, that's what's actually it happens going on. once. Think, like a baby polar think, bear, you can leave it to die? Rescue it happens once. Bears. You lose the whole game. I think rescue polar bears that's is sad, just though. the front. You it's have just to. It's a Coke business. in the game. This is a black market Coke, operation. Like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola? No. Okay, sorry, bad joke. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, that was definitely a black market operation going on. That would be funny if Coca-Cola picks up the game, though, and puts it out again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I really like it. And, and as far as co-ops go, I think it stands out from being not the same as a lot of other co-op games. So, it's cool. Rescue Polar Bears is my number seven. My number seven is a trick-taking game, but unlike um, others, it's my only trick-taking game. Um, and it's from Chile, and that is Gangsta, which is a really bad name. <laughs> What's it called, Tom? You Gangsta. You talking about Super 11. Yeah, uh, but true. I said this was a bad name. I didn't say that. Okay. Oof. Anyway, Gangsta is a... Game's already obscure. Why do you got to hate on the name? Trick-taking game. <laughs> That's true. Uh, trick-taking game. But in this game, when you everyone plays the cards to take the trick, the cards are then placed in a grid in the middle of the table. Right, and the right. winner gets to put where they go. And if you put certain cards in certain rows and columns, you'll score more points. What this does is it takes the cards in your hand and makes them worth a certain amount of points based on what's already out there. So if there's two sevens out there, sevens are now valuable. Mm, and you better be mm. careful when you play one. And, I, and you played this with me. I think so. I think so. It's you definitely did. Was that one time. of the early Dice Tower cons? Um, Your memory is obscured. We were Gangsta. eating hamburger. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, I really like... <laughs> you were hammered? Is that what you... No. <laughs> Hamburgers! <laughs> mm. I was the hamburglar. But anyway... Um, I like the game a lot. It's it's one of those games that I really would like to see reprinted. It's difficult though with trick taking games because trick taking games don't make a lot they of money. Don't do well, right? Yeah, a, a few do better than the rest, but most don't. Right. Uh, but I really like this game. If you ever get a chance, it's Gangsta. And again, I don't even know why because it's about. It says it on the screen. Please stop saying why it. Why do you say Gangsta? You sound so white. Gangsta. When you say it. I know he's like it's Gangsta people. That's the way it is, though. But it's not. But that, that's about gangsters. It's not about like gangsters. It's about gangsters. That's why I don't understand why the name is that way. <laughs> okay, we are done. <laughs> I don't think anybody out there is confused by what you seem to be confused. Why you think everybody's confused? I'm not thinking they're confused. You're saying that I'm saying it a weird way. I'm saying the name is weird because. That's talking about actual mobs and gangs. No one calls those people gangsters. Yeah, they do. No, they call people from the hood and stuff like that. No, I'm thinking that's you. No, I don't call anyone anything. 
Don't put this on me! No, no, he's right. No, he's right. Gangsta. Why would they just call them gangsters? The game. Yeah, why is it not called gangsters? It's probably because gangsters was already taken. Maybe. Or maybe it's just from Chile. They're like, yeah, gangsters. I don't know. I, I can A say that's the guy who holds the gun sideways when he points it at your head because oh, it looks me, cooler. That's me. Also, because I can catch a shell more easily. It's very hot. But I can like you just know, get him around. The it's a good trick-taking game. Okay, Sam, what's your number seven? My number seven is obscure, mainly, and again, this is in my dark. mind. Uh, it's obscure because it has been overshadowed by the other games that this company has put out. FFG? Um, this is FFG? No, this is not <laughs> FFG. We're waiting, baby, we're waiting. This is uh, put out by Red Raven Games. Okay. And uh, near and far and above and below, these have been huge games that I think have obscured Artifacts Incorporated. Okay. Artifacts Incorporated, I think, is... This is, is okay? Is, is it too well known? No, nah, it's close, but it's okay. I don't think so. I think it's been overshadowed by the other games, and it, it has been relegated to obscurity. I, I think when it came out, it made a big splash. You and I both really enjoyed it. We yeah. played it at the uh, Texas Tabletop Con for the first time, yeah. I think. I don't remember uh, if it was the first time, but we played it there, yeah. That was three, two years ago? Two, two years ago? Um, so it is a relatively new game, but uh, mine, it's, so you're fine. it's a great game, and I think all of the buzz that Near and Far and Above the Blow have gotten have just kind of pushed this one off to the side. So I just wanted to bring it back into the limelight for a, for a little bit because it's a really cool um, worker placement game yeah. that is just really takes that archaeology theme and runs it to a, to the max, and it really feels cool. Uh, there's a really cool economy that's going on in the game as well. It's just a really great game. Great artwork is what you can expect from Red Raven. And it's it's a great little compact game. Still have it on my shelf, and that's yeah. why I included it. Because it was, haven't really thought about it. Looked it looked, looked on my shelves last night, and there it was. So, And maybe part of the reason it got uh, crushed a little bit is, like you said, because it is one of the smaller size. Like 8-Minute yeah. Empire size. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like this big, right. the box. And the, the new box stuff dimensions. from Red Raven... It's getting splashier. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. so that's my number seven, Artifacts Incorporated. Cool. Number six. Number six for me is a game from Korea. This is the only one on my list I have from this one, and that is Cat and Fish. Oh, yeah. Do you still own this? No, I don't anymore. <laughs> it's such a weird game. Yeah, but it was a pretty fun, it was a pretty good worker placement game. In this game, you were cats going fishing. <laughs> so... I mean, everything else was the same. You could have not been cats. You could have been humans going fishing because right. it's all about you go out on boats and fish. That's not how cats normally do anything. It's one of those. Uh, well, who's the guy who says <laughs> Stefan Feld would be proud? <laughs> yes. Is that? No, that was uh, Colovini, right? Was no, Colovini? no, no. Michael Schott. Michael, Michael Schott, Schott, Schott is yeah, sorry. Yes, for F F F Felina. Felina. Anyway. Felina, yes. Um, so, cat and fish, you have these work, you're putting these guys out. You put your cats on boats. You'll send them out. The farther out you go, the better fish you'll find but you have to go farther. You're also selling fish at the market. You're finding different fish. It's a worker placement game. That The cover looks like that cutesy, but it's actually a pretty good solid worker placement game. So cat so, and fish. So the players are cats in that game. Is that what you're saying? They yeah, are. Like gangsters, cats. Gangsta cats. What's up? Not gangsters, gangstas. Yes. Gangstas. It's they hold, cat with a They K. hold their fish like this. And they're cats with like two A's. No, that's a new thing. No. Just saying. Mm -mm, gangsta. Just want to make sure they aren't confused. Just go for crying out loud. So I was having this burger, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is this, the meme episode? Is this number six? Yes, sir. Yes. Is it me on number six? Don't yes. FFG, baby. This is my only... No, it's not FFG. Oh, this is my only suspense, crossover, as far as I can remember, to the older list. Oh, okay. And uh, I think this one is obscure mainly because I think the only place you can get it is on the company's website. Um, but it is a really cool save your villages from the exploding uh, volcano game. You know, you have a, a volcano that is erupting, and it's called Eruption. And uh, the whole thing is, is that you're trying to protect your village from this, this uh, flow of lava coming from the, uh, uh, the, the volcano. And the tiles are the flow of lava, and you are directing the flow of lava toward your opponent's um, uh, villages. And it's got some really weird, quirky things. Like you can have a 
a straw wall. <laughs> I always thought that. We're blocking the, the lava. With Wait, a straw what? wall. <laughs> really? Yes. I'm like, okay. Well, there's like straw, was it straw brick and stone or something? Like, uh, yeah, okay, no, okay. straw wood and wood, yeah, straw, straw wood and stone. stone. Three little piggies like kind of deal, yeah, but for kind lava. Of, but you know, but yeah. yeah, it's. I'm sorry, if you have a straw wall and the lava's coming, I'll be like, I'm gonna go over to the guy with the, the stone I guess, wall. I guess maybe. I guess maybe it'll hold it for like a second. Yeah, I don't know about that. But no, it's not gonna work very good. But anyway, that's the that's the worst kind of wall that's out there as well. So, but anyway, there's so the paper I wall that didn't, make, that didn't make the cut. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's a really neat theme. You're you're basically trying to keep the heat of your village. Uh, right. Down as much as possible because when somebody breaks the barrier and ends the game, whoever is whoever has the least amount of heat in their village is the winner. Right. So it's it's uh, it has uh, take that mechanism to it where you're trying to um, raise other people's heat in their village and you can break people's walls down and have the thing flow in and of course you want to get as many flows of lava hitting your opponent's villages as possible so that their heat rises quicker. So there's definitely a take that element to it but i like the tile laying aspect of it and it's it plays very simply it's very easy to teach and uh it has just simply um gone away um yeah, never, nobody's talking about never it. never heard of it except from and you before yeah, yeah exactly so i mean it's just really obscure well, the company he started the company and made, these, it a lot. and made these games and then he moved into making a magazine the casual game magazine did he yeah and i think that's <laughs> where he's putting all his effort uh, instead okay, of the game. okay, okay. But I think you can still pick up the game on his website. I don't know if it's sold out or anything like that. I haven't mm. checked the website in a long time. But but uh, last I checked, you can still get it on his website, but that's the, one of the only places. But uh, that's my number six, Eruption. Cool. All right, my number six, uh, Tom was talking about Cat and Fish. Well, mine is called Sheep and Thief. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Sheep and well, yours, Thief. Yours didn't have an and in it. Uh, uh, I know. I'm... I'm Sheep and uh, Thief uh, did get a reprint, actually, from, I forget who, Pegasus, maybe? Wait, this just got reprinted. Just uh, got reprinted. Like a year ago, maybe no, a little less. That's in this past year. This was at UK GE, which is where I saw it. So Not the reprint, been... though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, either way, uh, did you pick any games that, that weren't from I thought you picked up the original version at UK GE. Mm -hmm. No, the original version's a little older than that. Okay. I played the original version year, with though. you at, uh, be at uh, in Texas, actually, when we first met um, Rebecca and Hunter. Mm -hmm. I think you played there with me. Yeah. And so, But it did get reprinted, so cool, but it's still very little known. I actually, I, I checked on BGG how many people had rated it, and it's while it is one of the highest ones on the list here, mm -hmm. it still was a low enough number that I was like, yeah, okay. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a card drafting s sort of root building game. Yeah. And in it you are you are collecting sheep, as many as you can, but you are also doing a few other things to, to gain victory points. You can have a road run from your starting location up at the top of your playmat to one of three different villages, and if you make it to the far one, that's ten points. The other ones are a little less. But also, as you are playing cards, you are moving around a thief character it's a tile and whatever you wherever you move it to on your board the other players all replicate that movement if you move it up they all move it up and any sheep it lands on then you take those and you put them in your pen and so there's a really clever take that mechanism where some people will actively move it out of the you know move it away from something they're worried about protecting you know uh, just to keep it from happening to them there's a few other things going on but the game is very quick the new version is especially pretty. It's, it's very well done and illustrated. And just has a great sort of simple vibe to it. Mm -hmm. But really enjoyable. It's uh, one that I'm, I'm glad got that uh, attention enough to be reprinted. Because I do like the reprint quite a bit. The original, the components were eh. But the new one's great. Yeah. So that is Sheep and Thief, my number six. I love it. He was playing a, you were eating a mutton sandwich when you... <laughs> wow. That's messed up. That's not right. Number five. My number five is a game, I believe, that was in the Cosmos two-player line way back in the day. Definitely. And... I don't know if the game is. You have no idea. And uh, it was called... Hellas. Hellas, that's correct. Oh, you love that's Hellas. I do. Yeah, I, do. I love this game. It is a great, simple... Uh, area control uh, game and yeah. it's just really cool it has great first of all components for the size of game that it is you have these little tiny 
little miniatures that are represent your dudes on, on the map and it's it's just a really fun two player experience and uh, has a little bit of tiling in there as well. Okay. So there, there's just a lot of things that I like about the game and it is just non-existent anymore. Oh, no, no, that's super Anymore. Cool. It's just, it's simply, it's probably out of print. You won't be able to find it anywhere. But if you do find it somewhere, you should definitely pick it up because it is a great area control two-player tile-laying game. Actually, I liked it when we played it, mm -hmm. but in a retrospect, I mm -hmm. don't think it has any place in today's market. Okay. I think it's okay at best. Really? In that line. Yeah. What two-player area control game is better? Is just as good or better? Um, well, the best two-player area control game is that I, off the top of my head is that one from uh, Jai Rogers made it first. It was a, the Japanese one. Uh, and they, they reprinted it. Yeah, it's a good game, though. <laughs> Jolly Roger? No, yeah, Jolly Roger did it first. <coughs> um, and then someone else repicked it up and reprinted it, but I can't remember who. I don't remember. What's the theme? Give me something here. I told you, Japanese. You're controlling different areas of Japan. You were. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's uh, Sun Tzu. That's, uh, it's called um, Dynasty's original. Dynasty's original. Okay, that was the original game, and now it's called Sun Tzu. Who made that one? That's. Um, it's Asmodee now, I think. Because it was one well, of that, their guys. That, that's one. What are you talking about? Is it Sun Tzu? Yeah. Well, Sun Tzu was I the original think it's, game. It's, I forget who, but someone who is basically part of Asmodee now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Hmm. I just think a lot of those old Cosmos games would not hack it today. I disagree. I will say, if someone is, is cannot <laughs> find that one, that game, uh, I guess I'll review it soon, so keep an eye out for it. Elos, which I just played, mm -hmm. has kind of a vibe similar to that. You're putting out a few tiles, because in that game the board's not that big. It's not. You know, you're putting out a few tiles, and it's not exactly area control, but you are like taking over a spot. Yes. So Elos is a little bit like that. So and that's new. So maybe that's something to look for, if you're hoping to get a little bit of that feeling. But yeah, Hellas is a neat game. Did you paint the minis though? No. His name isn't Vernon. They're like that small. They are. <laughs> They're also made of that bad, I mean, that hard way plastic. I would paint those in, minis is like. <laughs> There. Beautiful. Yes. Is it me? It is. All right, my number five is a two-player card game called Throne and the Grail. And this is... Osprey, right? No, no, this is... I have no idea. It's this little Asian game. I don't it's know. right down here. <laughs> uh, the thing about these kinds of games, we get them every now and then. There's little, there's often sort of nondescript. You don't know what to expect. And oftentimes you get a game that feels either unfinished or convoluted, unfortunately. And you're like, okay, there's a bunch of language on it sometimes. And you're like, okay, the translation's not very good or whatever. I love it when I get one of, those little, one of these little games and you play it and you realize this is clean and this is good. And this could, have, this could be in a Cosmos two-player line, for example. This one has that feeling. It's very simply, you are on your turn, you have five cards, you play a card to a line of cards, this is only two players, by the way, or you take the latest, the newest, five cards, or fewer, if there's fewer than five, but you've gotta take them all. And you are collecting sets. Some of the cards are straight up points, minus two, plus three, whatever. But some of them are different families, and if you have the most of that kind at the end of the game, you're gonna get those points for them. There's also the grail uh, sort of sub-mechanism in which there's three cards that are together, kind of put up together uh, the holy grail, and if you end up with all three of those, you just win the game outright. But you got the timing is really tricky, and so you got to play all five of your cards, and you get to take from the center once. That means if I'm ready to take now, and I'm still holding three cards, I could take. But the opponent could wait me out and wait for me to play all three of those before they take. I might be holding some garbage back though and they have to take from the back of the line. So it's really tactical card game. I just loved it. And it's, it blows my mind that this, is, that this hasn't been picked up yet and sort of reprinted. Because it's a great two player card game. So that is Throne and the Grail. Uh, I'm pretty sure I reviewed this too, so go check that out. So yeah, it's my five. My number five is a game, I don't remember the name of the company that made it, but I do remember the artist. I don't remember the designer, but the artist is Josh Capel. It was the first time I saw his artwork, and I was like, wow, I really like this guy's artwork. And that game is Conquest of the Fallen Lands. 
This game actually had the tiles in it, they're uh, hexagons, and you were trying to put these tiles down and, and control different areas on the board, you know, surround uh -huh. them. And the tiles were actually made of that, almost that felt stuff you buy at a craft store. It, it, like it had this felt. Really? Not felt, it's like that rubbery felt stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes okay. you see stickers made of it. Okay. Yeah, it was made of that with the, the picture in the front. It looked like almost a homemade game. It wasn't quite, and today I might not even have reviewed it because right. I would have looked at it and go, that looks like print and play. Right. But it's actually a very good game. There's just different armies out there, and you are, you are slowly placing these tiles and things, trying to control, and the more stuff that gets placed, the easier it is to take out the bigger tiles on the board because your armies, the things that you are placing w will hit in different directions, and so you might be helping someone else take another tile. It's a pretty solid game with really good artwork. Josh Capel does a great job on artwork. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That is Conquest of the Fallen Lands. I don't think it's in print at all at this point. Number four. Number four is the fantasy flight game. What is it? Oh, you don't like quicksand. If you were a Z, okay, I would say my quicksand. My joke at the beginning was that it would be that Reiner Knizia dice game. Age of War. Yeah. That's that is true. not obscure. Okay. Get them, Bounce! I thought it was. How many people do you see talking about this game anymore? A lot. Who? Some Me. Well, here That's about in it. our group, yeah. That's about it. All right. Well, maybe it's obscure. I never knew about I would the game like the until somebody decide. brought the game to one of our game groups and showed it to me. I didn't think you would like it. That's why I didn't even show it to you. Okay. Well, I, I think it is obscure. I mean, I, I don't see people playing it. Um, I don't see people talking about it, um, except for, you know, the few people that I've, uh, that I've met in our game group, not on the Internet. I don't. I don't think it's it's widely known at all. I mean, I think it's. I mean, it's done by a prolific designer. Yeah, right. but uh, I don't think it's one of his most popular games out there. Um, and it's small. It falls definitely under the radar of what Fantasy Flight usually puts out. Oh, that's true. Which is why I put it on the list. Uh, it's just not their regular fare of game. It's just a very simple dice rolling game, and that's literally all you're doing. You're trying to collect these different sets of castles and provinces and uh, score them for points, and whoever gets to a certain amount of points first wins. So it's very simple. It's very light. It's a great filler game, though, and uh, that's why I wanted to put it on my list uh, because I do not hear people talking about this at all. Uh, but Age of War is a great game. It has a great little theme that's wrapped around it, too. The dice are really nice. You're not, they're not chintzy or anything like that. Yeah. So that's my number four, Age of War. You yeah, deflate it because you were looking for something else, probably. I don't want to get hit. Uh... This game was originally. I don't uh, hit people. I didn't say. <laughs> no, this I mean, game was, was originally uh, Risk Express when I'm they came out with. Very uh, glad they changed the theme then. Yeah, it was. It only came out in Europe. Though. Remember those Express games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came yeah. in like a plastic kind of bin. I was trying to buy and it. They made uh, like a Battleship Express. That one was pretty good. <laughs> and then they made a few different ones, you know. Really. And Risk Express was the Reiner Knizia one. Mm -hmm. Actually, he made a couple for the line, but it never came out in the U.S. Oh. People would get them from Europe for like stupid amounts of money. I was trying to, but they were super expensive. Yeah, and then they've reprinted to that. The theme is definitely nicer in the reprint. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My number four is three games together. They all come in the same box, um, and that's Shakru, Pakru, and Azakru. <laughs> this is on your old list. It was. This is one of the two that was on my old list. The other one was Cat and Fish. Um, okay. Okay. Shakru, Pakru, and Azakru. I actually like them. I like Shakru the best. <laughs> I hate you so much right now. Shakru, Pakru, and Zakru walk into a bar. This is a basically is a this? slow player says, abstract game get out. of snake. Or you have your thing moving around the board. Like the snake on the old phone snake? Yeah, like you're moving around and everyone else is, and you're trying not to run into other people, but you're trying to eat the little dots. It's almost like multiple Pac-Man, but you have a, a body that moves with you. And, and the rules... And a board game? Yeah, the rules Ooh. change based on whether you're playing... Shakru, Pakru, Zachary. On what version you're playing. <laughs> right, and one of them is, Shakru I think is the middle one. I think one of them's super simple, one is fairly complex, and one's in the middle, and the middle one is the one I like the best. But they're, they're slightly variants in the same thing. They, they could have just called it one game and said, here's another variant. Okay, okay. Yeah. I like the sense. pieces, though, they're wooden They were never sold individually, stuff. right? No, no. Yeah, that seems like they should have just uh, done that. I would have just called it Shakru. Well, they did. Uh, I know um, Nestor Games did that recently, where they came out with a game called Green, but it has different versions. It's technically three different games, so they call the the whole thing is called Green, Greener, Greenest. Yes. 
It's like, come on, just green and two variants, you know? <laughs> you can even call it the variants, I think, in the rules, maybe. Now play greener. Yeah, yeah, right. And so I don't know. Anyway, okay. all right, my four, yeah? Yeah. My number four is my other trick-taking game. I only put two on the list. I was kidding. Uh, oh, I believed him. <laughs> no, no. no, my other one is called uh, Pups. And that's doggies, pups. And in it, it is from the uh, from uh, Bink Inc., the, the same... Um, they make pens. <laughs> it's Bink Inc., right? Oh, it's Bic. Uh It is from the same guy who put out the uh, game I really like about uh, traveling the national parks called Trekking. Tracking the National Parks. Oh, yeah. He put out a, a trick-taking card game after that, which is a great introductory trick-taking game. Artwork is really cute, very nice, easy to bring to the table and teach just about anybody. It's the kind of trick-taking game where you predict how many tricks you're going to take, which I don't tend to like that mechanism. But this one's a lot more flexible because when you pick the number of tricks you're going to take, you can say, okay, I'm going to win three, or you can flip that card over and say, I'm going to win at least three. And that's fewer points, but more forgiving. So you can say, okay, I'm one or at least one. Just betting how many tricks you're going to win. That used to be like a cool thing. It used to thing. be the thing. It's not my favorite, you know, but this one is a, a lot more forgiving with that. And then the ability, the other cool thing, the other cool twist is when you play cards, there's one suit that's kind of colorless. They call them the mutts. Those are the mutts, the dogs. Mutts you, are the best dogs. You yes, they are the best because you can combine a mutt with another colored suit to pump up that number. So an A plus, uh, plus two, that's Explain a Explain to me how the theming of that works there. What, is, that, what is actually happening? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. thematically. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. weakening the gene pool at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not bumping anything You're not helping. I'm going to breed this poodle with a mutt to make a better poodle. Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> exactly. I don't know why. I don't know. Anyway, it's a really nice trick-taking game. Definitely check it out. Um, good gift as well for someone, again, because it's, it's nice and light. Pups, my number four. Number three. Now, I gotta say, when I did my short list, there was actually a burger game on the list I really wish I had put it on now. Is that the one that came in a burger? No, not that one. It's the, uh, the one where you're... It's too soggy. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that right. was dumb, the one that came in the burger, because the rules didn't fit in the package. Yeah, they really didn't. That was kind so of... So dumb. All right, all but wet. it's a good game. All right, my number three is another set of two games. Uh, but they're the exact same game with different themes. No, that's, that's, that's like totally a top, uh, what, 13 no, now? Garbage. Yes. Uh, that's B Bonobo Beach and Kronberg. They are the exact same game that they oh, made yeah. with two themes. Uh, one was about finding the best spot on the beach, and the other was about building a castle. I like the beach one better because that theme was slightly less used than the building a castle one. Yeah. And this was made by... Um, uh, the same company who made that Western game I like, where they had rhombuses, and the, that, the, the tiles here were not squares, they're rhombuses, so on rhombi. your turn you're placing a rhombus or rhombi, correct, um, in different spots, again, trying to get your beach people to sit in the best spot where they have the, you know, you don't want to sit next to this nasty piece of trash. Actual trash. Oh, Okay. I was like, man, I was like, <laughs> that's totally. Cold, dude. That's, you don't say that right. about people. No, I'm talking about trash, that's you know. Not okay. Well, well you might sit next to some trash over here. <laughs> <laughs> Gangsta. <laughs> Please, some trash over here. Hey, you know. Uh, anyway, about it. I really like this game, though. It's a fast tile laid game. Forget about it. And you're playing, you know, you're playing the good tiles near you, the bad ones, but you're also trying to. You know, do you, where do you place your guys? You know, putting it so you get the most points. It's a, it's a solid game. Uh, just, I I heard tale that they were thinking about reprinting at one point, but I think that's fizzled off into nothing. But that's Kronberg or Bonobo Beach. I like the beach one better. Cool. Is it me? Yep. It is. All right, my number two is uh, an three, abstract. Three. three, three, three. I'm sorry. My number three. Now I have some information about his number two. Yes, you do. My number three is a game that I've talked about quite a bit. Uh, because I really enjoy it and it's super uh, under the radar. This is a game from Spain called It's Mine. It's a two-player game with uh, some drafting and some sort of uh, area control kind of a little bit in which you are you pick a city that you are going to rob blind basically is the idea. And you have different locations and then you're gonna draft characters, put them in those locations, then draft actions kind of and give them to those characters. And you sort of do a few cycles of that and then you see how well you did. It's, um, 
the play of it is very tactical, and I really enjoy it. It's going to take like a solid one playthrough, though, for you to grasp the icons, for one thing. It's a little icon heavy. And then also just how to do well, because it's not necessarily intuitive. But I really enjoy this game. I, uh, in fact, one time I, got, I was playing with someone and we played like three or four games in a row. Because hmm. we were like, oh wow, okay, let's try this other different city. And the city changes a little bit. Some of the characters that are in the deck. He wasn't happy robbing the one city blind. He wanted to rob half the world. Yeah, maybe that's how you're going to do it. I mean, gangsta. Um, I really enjoy it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is getting reprinted at some point in the future. Because again, the version I've got is, is very limited uh, in its, you know, how, how easily you can find it. But I really enjoy it. So it's called It's Mine. If you look this up on BGG, there are two games called that. This one does not have the exclamation mark. <laughs> so looking out for you. Oh that's, man, that's terrible. That is my number three. All right, my number three is a game called Far East War 1592. This one is uh, fairly, I think it's probably the uh, youngest game on my list. Uh, it just came out, I think, about a year and a half ago, maybe. And uh, it's a really neat game where it's, it's uh, replicating or simulating the, the uh, Japanese invasion of, of Korea. And, and those two forces fighting. You have a lot of cool things that are going on. You have, uh, um, I guess you could call it variable player powers because you have these different uh, generals that you can lead your forces around the table. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, the Japanese forces are different than the Korean forces and uh, as far as the generals are concerned and, and what they can do and all that kind of stuff. But it also had a very cool production value to it as well. Um, a lot of things that I liked about it, it was... Um, a two-player game that could be played with four players because they're each side. There's two Korean factions and there's two uh, Japanese factions. So uh, that was another thing that I thought was good. But I also think that it's it's better just played as two players, uh, as with most of those games that do that. But uh, Far East War uh, 1592 is my number three. Um, have I played this one? Yes, you have. Matter of fact, I think we played it <coughs> a lot. Um, we did a live play of it. So yes, uh, that's uh, uh, yeah, and I don't think you liked it as much as I did. It was I'm, a little too fiddly for you, um, if I remember correctly. But uh, I really enjoyed it. Huh? Okay. Number two. Is what's this an abstract? What's game? my number two, Sam? I have no idea. Well, here's the deal, though. Your abstract. You could have made a list of top ten obscure abstracts. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's that many. I mean, most abstracts don't get much buzz at no, all. Oh no! Right, for sure. Well, this is one, this is the one from the, not this batch of Gerhards, but the last batch. The one with colors. Yes. Where you were trying to get... F all of one color, all I of think. one color or multiples of various colors. Something like that, yeah. I forget what it's called. It's called tintas, which is inks in Spanish. Um, Got which it. It's called what in Spanish? Inks. Like... Inks? Ink. The, the plural oh, of okay, ink. Okay, okay. Um... And yes, you are moving one central kind of piece around, and the spot you get to, you take that one, if I'm not mistaken, and then right. you're collecting colors. But you, you can, like, get, bounce off them if you... Yeah, something like that. It's, it's been a little bit since I played. I just know that every time I play this one, it reminds me that it, how, how cool of an abstract it is, because it does... It's immediately... Um, Tactical. That's what I like about it. Like, there is no build in this game. There's no, like, you know, first third where you are just, like, positioning yourself for the strike. It's all strike. And I like that very much. And seeing a move where your opponent, if you're not careful, will get that, you know, last piece of a color and doing the best you can to get that one token far away from it so they can't, they can't get in there. Um, really enjoy it. This company has a lot of abstract games that are good. I think this is one of the better ones I've played. I really enjoy it. So that is Tintas, my number two. I wonder if that's where we get our word tent. Why would that? T-I-N-T, -T, when you tent something. Well, I mean, I'm sure they have the same root. Okay. A tint of something is also like... Right, that's what I meant. Yeah. Tent. I'm learning so much. Yeah, it's the same root the same. word. Okay. I need a burger. Okay. You need a burger? That's your number two, right? I agree. That's I always remember to stop. Telling my number two. My number two 
is a game that uh, people are going to say I included it just because of its theme, and that's not the case. I, 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 I was... All right, Vikings, I'm calling it now. No, it's not. Oh, really? No, it's not. Because of the theme. theme. Vikings is the theme. And it's not Vikings? It's not Vikings, no, it's not. Hamburgers. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, about, uh, no uh, we played this. I played this for the first time at uh, MeepleCon in Las it's Vegas. It's a religious theme. No, it's not. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. No. Because you talk about that uh, commission game. Maybe that's, that was it. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. MeepleCon. I don't remember. MeepleCon. I don't know. We Tell played us. it with the, gen the gentleman brought it and he said this is. Oh, are you oh! kidding? It's fantastic. That's funny. As soon as you, fantastic, I mean, it's baby. funny you said the gentleman, and yes. we're like, the poop game. Yes. <laughs> the exactly. gentleman. Exactly. This is the fecal Pecunia game. Pecunia non ole. Or non ole. <laughs> Yes, that is correct. The poop game. And this is also one of the only games I know that Sam has played with Jason and came back and said because Jason played, it was a better experience. Yes, that's probably you, true. You liked all his... No, oh, yeah. Jason was he, like on fire he, with good jokes. Oh, my goodness. The poop puns... They flowed. Flowed. Stop. Like <laughs> diarrhea. That was that way game. too much. You just listen, as you saw that line, you were like... Ah. <laughs> and then you rolled around. That is no. correct. Yes, absolutely. That was getting gross. But uh, over the line. I'm no, this saying. is a this is a very um, silly game. Is really what it boils down to. Um, because it's a good choice, but it's all list. you're really trying to do <laughs> is get as many people to use your outhouse. It's a Roman theme. Yeah, right? it's a Roman theme, right? You're trying to get as many people to use your outhouses as as quickly as possible because the quicker they get in, the quicker they get out, the more points you're going to get and the more money you're going to you get. You charge them to use but your But you have some people that really need to go bad and they are going to be there for a long time and they clog up. <laughs> no pun intended. Yes, uh, it is intended. <laughs> yes, yes, it is actually. That's no, not a pun. It's just actually, <laughs> it's actually happening. But, it's a literal uh, no, statement. But can you not let, I, it's put out by uh, Nor, the word Norris comes to mind. That's the first the company. Well, it was originally that, a German company that did right. it because it was a theme that just does not translate to American games as much. Even Are though I'm looking kidding? over there Come looking on, at a game man. called Talking Crap Americans right now. Would, Americans would eat this up and then, <laughs> you know. Stop! No! You're forbidden from speaking. <laughs> so that's my number two. Yes, it is! Pecunia. Stop it! Not only. I just realized I put that as my number two. You just realized that? I just realized it. Stop! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, my number two is this all, it's all garbage. I don't even talk now. <laughs> Mine is on the underground. Wow, it made number two. I didn't realize that until right now. This That's guy. funny. So on the underground, <laughs> um, this is a game by the Ragnar Brothers. They're out of business, I, I think, at this point. Maybe they're not. I think I saw them have a booth. Well, they don't make it any games. But this is they make a lot of games that are historically themed that are often cumbersome and this game is not. It's based on the London Underground, and you have this passenger who's super lazy, and you need to move him from one spot to another, hopefully using your subway lines. I think this one works really well. I'm surprised it was never picked up by anybody in America right. that I could tell. It's hard to find um, on the Underground. I have no jokes for this because Sam took all the jokes for the whole top ten list. In his you one. couldn't make any of my jokes on that one anyway. And finally, number one. All right, my number one is a game. This is one of the ones that I, I put on the list simply because I don't. I don't want to know what your number one is. A lot of people talking about this one at all, and and mainly it's because it's there's this, there's this no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's the Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean is it's it's been released in Europe, but it has not been released on a wide basis over here in America. And so this is a very um, American centric. Um, uh, obscurity level, I think. Uh, if you were in Europe, you probably would know of this game a little bit more. It's kind of what I'm banking on. I'm, I'm part of my list. <laughs> okay. Here, you know? Well, m my number one is V Commandos, and I've talked a lot about this game, and because I really enjoy it a lot, I've, I've. That's why it's my number one on this list, is because of how much I enjoy it, not necessarily how much I know 
how obscure I know it is. Right. So, um, but largely, you know, they they are not able to show up at conventions very often because of the expense that's involved with doing that. Um, they put much of the money, if I'm not mistaken, in, back into producing the game. But again, that's in Europe. You can pick it up, but it has to be shipped over. Uh, they don't have an American distributor that I know of. Maybe that's changed since the last time I checked. But this is a great um, secret, uh, kind of a covert operations type game in uh, set in World War II. And it's not. And this is one of the things that really kind of came to the forefront at the very beginning of my liking this game. It's not all about going and shoot them up. And which many war themed games, that's, that's what that's about. Kill as much, uh, you know, victory by attrition, whatever. Um, but this one is, you need to be stealthy as much as you can. You need to sneak around, you need to position your movements. It's almost a little puzzly in that aspect because some of the uh, troops will move in a programmed way, but you have to move around them and you don't want them to see you. And uh, because then, you know, the proverbial Pecunia non ole hits the fan. Yes, yes, um, your number two so, pick. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's it. yeah. yes, exactly. So, um, I really enjoy the game, and it is it is really criminally obscure at this point, at least oh. as far as I can tell. Uh, that's because I guess I've only ever heard him talking about it's it. So that's great, true. You know? Has a great production value. The artwork is amazing on these things. It looks good. The cover is awesome. Yeah, it, it could, looks good. It, it might also be a little long for some people's tastes because it, some of those some of those uh, scenarios can go a little bit longer than they probably should. But I, I enjoy them. I really do. So that's my number one. V Commandos. Cool. My number one is not obscure <laughs> in Dice Tower, Land, because I am championing this game everywhere, and I will eventually get it reprinted somehow, some way. Oh. And I take it to every convention, and that is Magical Athlete. I love Magical Athlete, but it's definitely an obscure game. Yeah. There's probably like less than a thousand people who own this game, for sure. <laughs> I used to. <coughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, I used to own it, sure. Then I got rid of it because it's a piece of crap. <laughs> no, his number. <laughs> no, no, the game is it's 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 nice. It's cute. I used to own it. Yeah, I don't. I anymore. love it's this fun. game. It just is it's really silly. It's a game that every time I introduce it to people, there's a few people at the table who always look like I made a mistake, and they're like sitting ready because you're like in this game you roll dice and you move around, and the first person to the end wins, and they're like. <clears throat> Well, what are you talking about, you're, Vassal? You're <laughs> dice Tower Tom Vassal, right? <laughs> exactly. But then you add in the special powers, and the game is just crazy silly fun. It, it really is. is. And all the stuff bounces off each other. It's really funny, and I like it a lot. I thought it was going to be reprinted. Uh, that fell through, so we'll have to wait and see. I wonder mm. why it fell through. Uh, reasons. Anyway, reasons. number one. Yeah, reasons. Number two. No. <laughs> Oh, you had to go to the bathroom all of a sudden. <laughs> all right, number one is a game called Dice Age The Hunt. And this game is a lot like oh, the... You just reviewed this like a week ago or so, like right? Like a month ago. Or, yeah, I don't know. Um, this one is... Uh, it's, again, one of those that I think could have the mass appeal. It's not just quirky and I like it, but no one's going to. I think this one could have that appeal to just about anybody because it feels a lot like... Uh, a much better known game called uh, Vegas that came out from Malaya. The Rudiger Dorn game where you roll dice and then you assign, like you roll up, you know, and you can assign all your fives to the five spot or all your ones to the one spot. Whatever. You are then playing basically area control of each of those places. In the Las Vegas game, you're grabbing money. In this game, you're hunting beasties. And you are doing that, but this game has taken that basic system and added a lot more interest to it. you got special tokens going on now. You've got uh, control of those animals will give you a number of victory points straight up. But if you've got the most of a kind, you get a bonus. You've got a character that wanders, and so you might have an extra character come and help you for one fight, one round, you know. you got special actions, which you get to draft from a set of them when you are out of dice. And so normally you got this, you know, this balance between waiting, seeing where you should show up at the last minute and snipe someone, or running out of dice quickly by, you know, if you roll a bunch of fours and just play all the fours, and taking one of those special sets of cards early before other people get to. Really nice. You know, you play four rounds, game's over. It's clever, attractive, very attractive, and just a cool theme. You know, the whole prehistoric theme is neat. And 
It just works surprisingly well. This is from Hobby Japan, the publisher, and I very much enjoy. So that's my number one, Dice Age, The Hunt. Very cool. All right. Well, this is one of those lists that, I mean, the comments could go on forever, probably, if you tell us your favorite obscure games, because there's... Everyone has different games that no one talks about, right? And everybody has a slightly different definition of obscure, which I do want to mention, because again... For some people, it's scare... I'm... You know, for some people, some people might hear some of the games and be like, oh, those aren't obscure. I've, everybody I know has got one. Well, then your group is into obscure games. Well, you know what possibly. I mean? Possibly. Right. But yes, it is. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the voice on what obscure means, but no, just are. saying that that's, that scale is there, so, you know... As opposed to us saying, okay, the best game from 2014, that's definite. You know, this is not as concrete. Hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. <laughs>